Hello. In this video, I'll be giving a quick overview of Bent AI Docs. And what Bent AI Docs for Microsoft Word is, is essentially a add-in that helps users make their documents more accessible by helping users find instances of inaccessibility and helping them remediate these issues. Now, in order to use our product, we need to first install it. And in order to install it, we'll go to the top right, go to add-ins, and go to more add-ins. And here we can search up Bent AI Docs. And here, now we can add it. Now I already have it added, so I'll just skip the installation process. Once you have our add-in installed, you can now open it, and you can do so by going into the top right once again and opening up Bent AI Docs add-in. And the first time you open our add-in, you'll be greeted with a login screen. So what you want to do is just once you have an account, input your email, and then once you hit send verification code, you'll get a one-time use code within that email that you entered, and you can use that to log in. Now that we've logged in, let's get started. We can start by hitting this button called Scan for Issues. And what that will do is the add-in will now scan our example test document that we have right here for any instances of inaccessibility. And it will split those instances into several categories, such as font, contrast, image, etc. So we'll start with something simple, such as the font. And we'll do font size in particular. And here we can see that we have this nice card for each uh, issue type that goes into greater detail regarding that issue. So here we see suggestion, font size may not be accessible. Tag, which is the WCAG tag that this issue is associated with. The meaning, which is how we're failing it and how we could fix it if you wanted to fix it manually. And then the link to the WCAG website to that specific um, issue. So I'll go and go back. And now we have the two instances that it found that have a small font size. And here we can hit locate on each card to find it in our document. And then we can hit fix. So now we'll see that it's been changed from a font size of 8 to 12. And we'll do that for the other one as well. And now you can see that that issue is now gone. And now we can move on to font family. I'll hit locate. Here we can see font family is not very accessible here. So we can choose an accessible font. So I'll do Helvetica. And we can either hit fix or in a instance where there's multiple instances of this issue, we can just hit auto fix all. So I'll just do that for here. And here we can see that it's now a font of Helvetica. Now we can move on to contrast ratio, hit locate, and here we'll see that we have a yellow text on a white background making it hard to see. And before we hit fix, I would just like to explain a little caveat that this one has. And here we can see the, that caveat in the right side. Here we can say that it does not detect or fix highlighted text in the middle of paragraphs. So this would be like an instance where let's say this sentence in the middle of a paragraph is a yellow font color. It may not detect that. So we recommend double checking paragraphs that have multiple font colors manually just to ensure that you're not missing out on anything. But yeah, for now, I'll just hit fix and we'll see that it's been changed from a yellow font to a black font color. Now we can move on to merge cells. And here, these are basically tables, such as this one right here, that has multiple columns or rows that are merged into one cell. So here we can see that it's supposed to be two cells, but here we see that it's only one. And in order to fix that, we can go ahead and split it. That way it is no longer like that. And for these ones, the caveat is that you have to do it manually. We do not offer a auto fix for these ones for fixing merge cells. So here, now that has been fixed. So if we were to run a scan again, we'll notice that the merge cells category is now gone. Now let's move on to the multiple H1 issue and we'll hit locate. And here we can see that use cases is a heading one and so is this one right here, overview of computer evolution. And when you look at a PDF, heading ones essentially indicate the main title of that document. So having multiple heading ones means 
that there's multiple titles we can, which can cause confusion which is why we are running into this issue here. So I can hit fix and now use cases is a heading 2 and now we can move on to nested heading and hit locate so here we'll see the use cases once again is also problematic when it comes to nested heading and so is history and we'll see that we're going from a heading 2 to a heading 4 when you should really be going down sequentially so it should be let's say heading 1 to heading 2 to heading 3 to heading 4 but here we're jumping from a heading 2 to a heading 4 and skipping heading 3 which, shouldn't, which isn't allowed so we'll hit fix and now we'll see that it is a heading three. So we're going from one, two, three, and we're not skipping anything. And now for the last issue, we have images. So these are essentially images that do not have alt text. So if I right click and hit um, format picture, we can see the alt text. And we'll do the same for this one right here. And we can see there's no alt text present. So I'll go ahead and hit auto fix all issues. And what that will do is have our AI model analyze both of these images and come up with a corresponding alternate text description and insert that into the image. And it will also detect if that image is a complex one. So a complex image is essentially those that are a chart or a graph. So those ones will recognize is as complex and also insert a much more in-depth paragraph below it. Another caveat is that we do not detect images that are non-inline. So non-inline is images that are like let's say in front of text or behind text. We do not detect those. So those ones will have to be made inline or you'll have to manually add all text for those. So it appears to be done. So what I'll do now is double check the alt text that it generated. So let's go back and we'll see open laptop with colorful screen display which sounds about right and scroll down to our second image and here we'll see 2018 global laptop market share pie chart and then because it was a complex image it also inserted this much longer paragraph going into greater detail describing that image. And let me just delete this there we go. And once that's done, we are now ready to export it as a PDF because there are no more errors detected. And to do so, we'll go ahead and go to document info. But here we also have instructions as well for um, the desktop and web version, depending on which one you're using. It's a little bit different. So but I'll be going over the web version. So first we go to document info and we'll set the document title and we can either change it to one that we like manually or using the H1 which is the overview of computer evolution so we use that one and now we can move on to tables and marking them so I'll go back and here we can see that we can mark headers and columns so for this one I'll just do both of them and what this will do is when we export it to a PDF it will ensure that this row right here and this column will have a special tag to indicate that it is the header row and header column. And what's that done? We can now export it and in order to do so we go to the top left, we go to export and then we just do download as PDF. And once that's done we hit download and you're basically done and now you have an accessible PDF ready to be used. So here I went ahead and opened up our newly made PDF in Adobe Acrobat and ran an accessibility checker. And we will see that it passed every single check except for two found within document and that is logical reading order and color contrast and that is because those need to be manually checked. Adobe Acrobat does not check those for you which means that we have passed every single issue other than those two. And that is basically it, and thanks for watching.